Welcome to the Tessa, one of my best solo bases to date, offering a wide range of strong characteristics that offer an insane base for both offline and online protection, for solos or even small groups. The Tessa hosts a new unsplashable hidden roof bunker, upping the raid cost by 24 rockets. As well as my new meta turret pod design, this base also has hidden funnel wall shotgun traps and Petrico peak bedrooms within the honeycomb. You will also find some unique shot front intercompound head peaks, and finally, a strong roof that is covered with a raid base protection, which offers a great head glitch to fit today's crouching meta. Pair all of these features with a spacious inside that can be used for a wide range of deployables for extra respawn points or loot room, and a base that follows an easy step-by-step -step expansion process. If you like what you see, the Tessa might be the base for you. Before we get into the tour, I'd like to quickly thank everyone for the insane support recently. We're almost at 2,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing. We start off the tour with a standard disconnectable TC. It can be disconnected and reconnected as shown. We now enter one of the three external TCs. There is space here for a locker and a respawn point. Here is the upkeep of each external TC. We enter the base through a simple single door gatehouse that offers angles into and outside your compound. Entering the compound, we're instantly met by these shotgun traps watching each of the entrances and my new turret pod design on the right and left. Here you'll find some unique head glitch peaks into the other side of the compound using the shot front, as well as some wide gap peaks. Using this turret pod, you can have extra space for respawn points, as well as checking the opposite side of the compound. Here you will find two fake entrances. These can be used for a locker kit or extra storage. You can also use the shot front to get around the compound quickly. These shotgun traps act as a mini funnel wall. And once again, we have the same hit glitches on each side, as well as the wide gap peaks. Entering the real entrance, we enter through a simple single door airlock. Here there is space for deployables such as your workbenches, and here is the core of the base, which is your living space and one of the four main loot room areas. Here is the upkeep of the main TC. We enter the second floor through this simple jump up. On the second floor you'll find space for many more deployables such as electric furnaces, extra respawn points and more loot space. This level is symmetrical by three and you'll have space for two batteries. Entering one of the three separated sides of the shooting floor, we have some good angles into the other side of the compound using this head glitch as well as some simple embrasure peaks. There is also a window that watches the main entrance. This can be replaced with an embrasure if you prefer. These features are mirrored on this side as well. We now enter one of our three main respawn points. You can replace the locker with an extra bed if you're in a larger group. Here you will find some Pratico peaks into each side of the compound, as well as some extra storage space above. We enter the roof using one of the three jump ups on the side of the shooting floor. Here you will find three turrets covering the roof. As you can see this shooting floor offers a great head glitch angle that you can remain crouched as well as raid base cover. You can easily advance around the shooting floor and acquire many head glitch angles regardless of where you are. There is also space for three windmills on top of the roof. Now for the hidden bunkers on the roof, you can place a twig roof as shown which will open the bunkers above. This is repeated on all three sides. I will be doing a tutorial guide on how you can apply this bunk to many base designs and how it works in the future, so stick around if you'd like to see that. By using these three sheet metal bunkers, we up the raid cost by 24 rockets. 
you can in fact upgrade these bunkers to high quality metal, upping the raid cost by 45 rockets extra instead of only 24. You want to start off the build by placing a square to claim your build spot. This can then be quickly expanded into your starter core. You want to now expand by a square and a triangle. In this triangle you want to place a jump up. Then on the other side you want to place a doorway for your airlock. This is what the base should look like. Now you can extend the entrance for more security. You now want to add honeycomb to the remaining two sides. Make sure to upgrade this wall inside your honeycomb to sheet metal as you will not be able to access it later in the build. Make sure that you add two half walls on top of each other. This will ensure that the bunker works later in the build. It is essential that you do this. Now on the remaining corners you want to place a single door frame on the left hand side. Then wall in this side as well as a wall in between the door and the wall. Then simply cover the top. You can now add a single door frame. This is to make sure that raiders have to keep guessing where the entrance is to your core. Finish up by adding garage doors to all of the double door frames. This is what the base should look like. Now on the side of your entrance you want to add an airlock, but make sure to add the two other fake entrances early on into the wipe, this will help with the chances of a door raid. I highly recommend that you use a door skin without a window here. Now simply honeycomb the other corner to the right of the doorways. This is what the base should look like. Now we will do the honeycomb bedrooms. You want to start by placing a square and two triangles on each side. Then make sure you put a half height floor as well as a window frame. This is vital for the bunker to work as well. Then simply fill in the rest as shown. You want to make sure that you place this floor to honeycomb the bedroom. It will also act as a socket for the bunkers. Make sure to upgrade this floor and frame to metal as well as the wall in front. This is what it should look like. Now you can repeat this on the other two sides.
this is what it should look like. Now you want to place a window into this frame here. You can replace this with an embrasure if you prefer. You want to also place ladder hatches as shown. Now add some embrasures for your Patrico peaks. Now we will do the shooting floor. You want to simply place four frames as shown on each side and then cover the top with floors. On this gap you've left you want to place a triangle as well as two window frames and then an entrance. You can repeat this on the other two sides. When placing the embrasures, make sure these ones on the corner face inwards and then the top triangle outwards. You can place these embrasures outside or inside, I will quickly switch them to inside in a second. Now for the bunker. You want to start off by placing a reversed honeycomb triangle in the centre as shown. Now you want to wall in each side of the squares like so. Then add triangle roofs on each of the corners. You want to finish this up by adding a half height floor of honeycomb on top. Now you want to place these stone frames on each side of the shooting floor just above the ladder hatch. This will ensure true stability. I highly recommend when placing this bunker you test it with twig only first before upgrading. The stability should be roughly 21%. Anything more than 23% and the bunker will not work. Now we will finish up the shooting floor by adding this half height floor and double door frame. This will improve our Pachuco peaks into our compound from our shooting floor. Now repeat this on the other two sides. Now place shot fronts on each of the three sides. Make sure the door is on the outside of the base. This is what the base should look like. Now finish the shooting floor by adding turret pods on each side. Follow this up by adding these triangle roofs as shown. Now we will add the raid base cover peaks using these double door frames as well as the low walls on top. These are optional but I would highly recommend having them. This is what the roof should look like. Now we will do the gatehouse design. With this floor you cannot place a foundation if it is a default skin of stone. 
You can fix this by upgrading it to a skinned version or sheet metal if you don't have the DLCs. You want to simply build out by one half moon, place a triangle and then come back with a square. This will be your gatehouse. You can upgrade this foundation to sheet metal. We connect this to the main base by placing a half height wall and some triangle frames. Make sure that this triangle is a floor and not a frame. You can simply wall in the rest. This is what it should look like. Now you want to repeat this on the other two sides. Now add window embrasures and doors to each gatehouse. Now we will do our three turret pod designs. Start by placing two squares on each side and a triangle in the middle. Then build out by two squares, place one triangle and come back with one half moon, making sure to delete the original twig triangle. Then you can upgrade the foundations as shown. Do not add a triangle on top of these two single frames. You want to now wall in the back of the pod, then when placing this frame make sure the conditional is showing. I will link my turret pod video down below in the description if you'd like an advanced guide to this turret pod. Now you want to start off by connecting to the external TC by adding the square and frame as shown. Then you want to build out by one half moon, place one square and then the final three triangles will be your external TC. Make sure you place two half height walls as shown. You connect this TC to the turret pod as shown. It is key to add that you do not want to place a triangle floor here. This will prevent the placement of your TC in your external. As you can see, you cannot place this TC. This will be because of this floor. You want to make sure you do not have this floor. If you do, you need to soft side it. Now repeat this external TC and turret pod on the other two sides.
is what the base should look like. Now simply place a barricade on the top of each turret board and gatehouse. When placing the compound, make sure that you place these external walls either side of the gatehouse first before connecting it to the turret board. This is what the compound should look like. Now we'll extend our external TC building privilege to prevent griefing as well as adding space for our windmills. We have almost finished the base, now I will run through the turret pod placement as well as deployables. I will also include recommended high quality metal upgrades later on. Make sure the turrets in the turret pods hug the back wall. Simply place the shotgun traps as shown. Now, simply add garage doors to all of your shooting floor. As previously mentioned, you can replace this locker with another bed if you're in a larger group. There is extra space for two small boxes on each side of the Patrico Peak bedroom. This can be used for extra kits or storage. Make sure to add a large box, this gives the best angle to using the Patrico Peaks on the sides. Place two large batteries, one on each of the single doors. 
You can replace these with extra kits if you prefer. I'd recommend on these walls that you do your electrical circuits. Feel free to customize your placement of deployables on this second layer how you please. This is what I'd recommend. When you have enough high quality metal, you want to make sure you place an armored double door next to the TC. This will increase the raid cost through doors. Here are some recommended upgrades when you acquire the materials. 